Dr. Pilevsky also spoke about food allergies and he mentioned specifically the vitamin K shot. Many people do not realize that newborns receive a vitamin K shot at birth, even though it's been administered since 1961 by recommendation of the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics. According to the CDC, babies are born deficient in vitamin K, and without enough vitamin K, they can't make enough substances that are used to form clots, and they are at risk for vitamin K deficiency bleeding, or VKDB. A vitamin K shot given at birth is the best way to prevent VKDB and assist the newborn with blood clotting capabilities. In rare instances, kids can be born with a bleeding diathesis or a bleeding pathology called VKDB, which basically means that they don't have enough vitamin K. Vitamin K is extremely important in the ability to clot, to basically clot and stop bleeding if you're, if you're internal bleeding or external bleeding if you have a cut on your skin. And so they're given a synthetic drug. The generic name is phytanidione. Why inject a child with a liquid substance, with a vaccine-like substance that contains aluminum, benzyl alcohol, and propylene glycol, which is antifreeze, when you can get the same, honestly better, source of vitamin K through diet? The mother can eat green leafy vegetables for a period of weeks before the child is born. The vitamin K from that would be transferred through the placenta. You could give an oral form of vitamin K as opposed to an injection. And although that's not gonna be absorbed probably in the gut as well as transfer from the placenta, another, another completely reasonable way to get vitamin K into the, into the uh, uh, child to have normal clotting for a problem that doesn't occur that often to begin with. I mean, most kids, I don't, I don't think that VKDB, vitamin K deficient bleeding is, uh, is that common. It's another opportunity to inject a child with pharmaceuticals, my opinion. Dr. Sani mentioned the generic name of vitamin K, which is phytonidione. On the package insert, there's actually a black box warning. An alternative to the vitamin K shot is oral vitamin K. There have been no studies indicating that oral vitamin K causes childhood cancer. However, a 1992 study in the British Medical Journal was the second study to confirm a link between the vitamin K shot and childhood cancer. I want to read the conclusion of this study. The only two studies so far to have examined the relation between childhood cancer and intramuscular vitamin K have shown similar results, and the relation is biologically plausible. The prophylactic benefits against hemorrhagic disease are unlikely to exceed the potential adverse effects from intramuscular vitamin K. Since oral vitamin K has major benefits but no obvious adverse effects, this could be the prophylaxis of choice. No child is born with an intact immune system. The, the immune system of a child is struggling, literally struggling into existence for the first two years. And that's why most countries in the world don't vaccinate before the child is two years old. And, and their incidence of autism and vaccine injury is much, much less than the United States. I just came back from a two week lecture tour in Europe. And in most countries of the world, they get about half of what American kids get. So what I would tell parents is that they need to trust themselves and you know your child better than anyone else in the world and you know your family better than anyone else in the world and actually we should not be trusting government agencies to tell us what to do with our children we should be trusting ourselves <laughs> and we should be finding medical professionals who we can trust who we can make collaborative decisions with about our children's health so the CDC does not know better. Your child's teacher does not know better. And even your doctor does not know better. You're on the ground every day, boots to the ground with your baby, with your child, and you're the person you should trust. <laughs>